If you've seen any of the videos on my channel recently, you would know that I've been extensively testing the new 2020 M1 MacBook range, specifically the base model MacBook Air with just 256 gigabytes of SSD storage and seven GPU cores. And it seems like pretty much every video I make, I'm just blown away again and again and again. And I know it sounds like I'm a Mac fanboy and I promise you I'm not. I actually prefer to use Windows, but honestly guys, like after using this machine for the last couple of days, I'm seriously reconsidering that. So just to start this video off, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of video editing on DaVinci Resolve. Now this is version 16, which at the moment is just completely not optimized at all for the new ARM-based Macs. I've tried to download the 17.1 beta, but it's just not working. So I'm stuck with this one for now. But as you're about to see, that is no problem at all. Now, this particular video here is the review I did on the M1 MacBook Air. And all of the footage for this is all 4K, full frame DSLR, 100 megabits per second in .mp4 codec. And it's all sitting on this Samsung T5 SSD. And actually, funnily enough, so is the actual file itself for Resolve. So I actually edited this on my Windows computer and then brought it over to this Mac just to see how it would work. And yeah, it works pretty good. So without further ado, I'll just get straight into it. So we'll click here on the timeline and I'll just press play and just see what happens. So I'll pause that, I'll do some scrubbing. Some faster scrubbing. And then we'll do play. That right there is a transition. Now, that doesn't even play on my Windows machine. And I'm using a 3900X CPU with a 1080 GTX graphics card. This literally does not play in real time. Like I have to just pause and skip forward, but on the Mac, that is almost playing, that transition is almost playing in real time. Now, I'll also show you how I have this set up. So, obviously this is a dual monitor display. So this particular monitor here, I'll actually try and link it in the description if you wanna check it out. But I've been using this for about four or five years. It's a great monitor. It's a 25 inch 1440p panel and it's just connected via a adapter using HDMI. I don't have any of those Thunderbolt or those crazy 4K monitors, guys. This will have to do, but I've actually been using this for my professional job uh, for the last three or four years. Now, I don't actually video edit. It's mainly just productivity and internet and Excel and that kind of stuff, but I've been using this exact same setup, keyboard, mouse, and everything, and it's worked perfectly fine, but I have to say I have never, ever edited 4K footage using this setup before, and it's absolutely insane to me. So continuing on, I have this primary display set up as the main video output and also the timeline. I prefer it this way. I like to just look straight at the screen so I can see not only the preview, but also a large timeline. And then on the secondary monitor, I will just have bits and pieces. So over here, I've got the source files, I've got audio and video transitions, and anything else I wanna add, I can add there, but that's really all I need for now. And what I especially like about this setup is you can actually just use the trackpad here to scrub super, super easily. Generally, I'll have this computer on the left-hand side, um, so I can use the mouse with this hand, and then I can scrub with this hand. Makes it super, super easy to edit. Um, but just for the purpose of this video, I've put it on the right-hand side, so you can see it in the camera. Now, I'll also show you what settings I have the timeline in. Timeline resolution, you can see that's playing in 4K and the video monitoring is in HD 1080p 25fps. Uh, now, I generally don't play back in 4K. I don't think it's really necessary, but um, let's just change it anyway for the hell of things. Now, video monitoring is mainly if you're using an external monitor, so I don't actually think it has an effect on this. Like, I'm pretty sure this is just 4K, uh, but let's just change it anyway to 4K and see if it has any effect. If you do actually know if this will have an effect on my particular setup, let me know, because this is technically an external monitor, so I'm not really sure if it'll work or not. So we change that to 4K, and then we'll play again. 
no difference. Okay, so that's fine. But again, like guys, this is playing in 4K. This is just raw 4K footage, 100 megabits per second. If we go into the color correction, you can see, uh, well, you can't really see, but they are lightly color corrected each clip. There's nothing too crazy on there, just a few curves, um, a few gamma and hue corrections and that kind of thing, but it works perfectly fine. So if we now go to the final test, which is gonna be rendering, let's see if we can render this bad boy out. So let's just call this one review. And we're gonna uh, do it in QuickTime, H.264, 25 FPS, 4K, all the standard stuff. Okay, and we're gonna add to render queue. And we're gonna replace, because I've already rendered it, and we're gonna start render. Now again, bear in mind, this machine is not only outputting to a 2K display, it is also rendering 4K footage. And if I actually go and open up Safari in this other window, I will bet you that I can actually go onto my YouTube channel and edit some of my videos. So descriptions, Let's see if we can play one. This is incredible. All right. So let's go down, see if it loads quickly. That is loading pretty well. Let's reply to this guy. That's working fine. Click on another video. That's working fine as well. Okay, you know what, bugger it. Let's just go to Chrome as well. And again, like you, <laughs> This is just insane. You can see how quickly this is rendering. It's almost 25% done, full 4K footage. I'm multitasking in the background and this thing is barely warm. You can almost not even tell that it's turned on. Now just even minimizing programs is smooth. So that kind of genie effect, you can actually turn that off in the settings, but it is actually somewhat graphically intensive. And you can see there it is just, <laughs> It is making no difference. So let's also go onto activity monitor. There definitely is like a, a slight delay. It's not quite as good as what it is usually, but again, like, I mean, it's it's got an editing program open rendering 4K footage in the background. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit of slack. I, I don't actually know what Chrome's doing. Again, it's it's been glitching out. It's just not the right version, so. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So on the CPU, Resolve is using about 50% of it. And there's still about 30% idle, uh, but it's using almost 90% of the GPU, which you can see there. Okay, we're about halfway through the render as well. And yeah, so Resolve is definitely using quite a, quite a large amount of the CPU, but it's definitely using mostly the GPU. And if we go into memory, Resolve is, yeah, pretty much using a full eight gigabytes. So what's happening is the Mac is dedicating all eight gigabytes to the render and then taking bits and pieces as necessary to load the other apps. And you can see here again, like, I mean, YouTube is, again, it's a little bit slower than usual, a little bit, but it's still definitely working. Like I'm scrolling down it's loading fine, everything is coming up. It's incredible. Okay, so I might actually just end that video here. I just wanted to show what it is like to A, edit off an external hard drive, B, use an external monitor and output in a 2K or potentially a 4K resolution if you can, and C, not only do all of that, but render and multitask at the same time on a $999 entry level MacBook Air. Again, this only has the seven cores of GPU. It cost me $999 US dollars. And a year or two ago, the original MacBook Airs were absolutely useless. So 
What an incredible transformation. Now, again, any comments or questions you guys have for me, please leave below. Apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.